In this section, we're going to talk about authentication in server-side Blazor. First, let's have an overview of a typical authentication system and see what are the components in a typical authentication system so that we know what we are going to configure. Because to configure authentication for ASP.NET Core, there's many components. So having a big picture will help us to understand what we are actually configuring. Right, so there's three, basically there are three different layers of any authentication system. So we'll have the UI layer, which will interact with the users to register, login, recover password, uh, manage user profile, etc. And then we'll have the core functionality for authentication, which is to authenticate and to authorize. Right, so this is where we, uh, receive the user information and uh, we authenticate the user information or authorize the inform information, right? So we will have a, a ticket, either a ticket or a token to deal with. And then we verify the ticket and see whether it's valid. That's authentication. And then we'll see whether the user has a sufficient permission to access the resources the user is trying to access. So that's the authorization. So if I was for authentication, then it will return HTTP 401, which is uh, an authorized, right? And if it uh, fails to author fails on authorization, then it will um, return HTTP 403, which is forbidden. And last but not least, uh, this is the DB or the ORM or the DB and ORM is a combination. Um, that's where the user information, the roles information, and everything else, the claims are stored, and uh, the data is uh, and operated, right? Like saved or updated or deleted. So those are the main parts of a typical authentication system. So now let's look at how we're gonna configure them. First, let's create a server side up Blazor application. And let's select Blazor server side and let's change authentication to individual user accounts and store it under user accounts in app. Right? We're not going to uh, cover the cloud scenario. And then let's click on create. So then let's first take a look at the project file. So remember, we have three parts, the UI, the functionality, as well as the database, right? So for database, this is the package, right? This is the NuGet package that we're using, which is the ORM, uh, which in this case is the Entity Framework Core, okay? And uh, for functionality, we're using Identity, framework, right? So this is the identity for Entity Framework Core. Uh, so this handles the authentication and authorization. And for the UI, so this is the package that contains all of the default user interfaces that handles login, logout, register, uh, and all those other uh, user interfaces. Right? And then let's look at the startup file and see how these uh, different packages are configured, right? How those three different layers are configured. So we have configure services and configure. So configure services are configuring those, basically the packages, right? And the configure uh, method is actually configuring, for us configuring the uh, middleware, right? So again, we're going to look at our you know, database or RM configuration, which happens right here on the top, right? So this configures a, our a uh, entity framework and it's, it uses this connection stream, which comes from uh, this app settings, right? So this is our connection stream, this is our database, and then uh, the second one, this is configuring the functionality. This is configuring our uh, identity framework, right? And 
also providing a identity user model. This model corresponds to the SPNet user table in our database. Okay, so basically this uh, configures the identity framework also connects from here back to the database here, right? And this is providing that model that corresponds to that. And this is the, the database context which corresponds to the database. And then, so basically this configures the database, this configures the functionality. So which part is configuring the, U, uh, the UI? So uh, there is a, the UI is actually inside the solution, uh, but w this authentication state provider, uh, this is when the UI needs information of the current login user. That's, uh, that's what this is for. Okay, so this gives us the user information. Then let's look at the configure method. And the configure method, uh, it configures the middleware for authentication. Okay, so this uh, use authentication and use authorization. There are two middlewares that handle the uh, authentication and authorization. When these middlewares are being used, it look, looks for a specific concrete implementations of certain uh, interfaces like iAuthentication Handler, right? And those interfaces are actually implemented inside the identity framework, which we have dependency injected by using these, uh, these calls. So then for authentication and authorization, it will use these injected classes to, to, to finish those works. And then last but not least, this map controller con configures the routing for our uh, default user interfaces because uh, we're going to see that the user interfaces are um, not blazer components, right? Not razor components, but uh, razor pages. So those razor pages need uh, a default routing, uh, which is the default attribute routing. And also, uh, this map controllers uh, set up the default reader page routing, which is actually uh, according to the, the page structures. And that's, uh, now let's run this. So first, we need to register user. We can use any email, doesn't matter. Right, and then, we're going to give it a password and then we register. This comes up because there isn't a database, right? So we need to apply our migration to create that data because if we look at our data folder, we can see this migration here that actually create all these tables, the roles, the users, and all of the, the other ones, right? The role claims, the user claims, and everything else, right? So these tables are only, uh, for now, models in our C-sharp code. So those C-sharp codes has to be mapped to the database, and that database has to be created first. By clicking on Apply Migrations, uh, it's gonna run this these migrations, migrations and the database will be created. So that's, um, that's entity framework. So I'm going to click, click on apply migrations. All right. Okay. So register confirmation. So we click here to confirm our account. So normally this is going to send an email, but here it's just a dummy one. And then, uh, because we have already, uh, Register, so we are going to log in. Okay, so we logged in. Right now, we can access all of these. What if we log out? Can we still access all of them? Yeah, we can still access all of them. So then, how do we secure our Blazor components? Right, to secure, secure a specific component, for example, if we want to secure our uh, counter and both counter and fast data pages. Then we go to the component. We go under pages, go to counter, 
and we use we give it an attribute right so which is um, if you're familiar with sp.mvc MVC or sp.net core MVC or uh, so this is uh, a attribute sorry uh, the authorized attribute that you usually use for your controllers so we use this here and then we copy it to fetch data as well so now uh, we go back to our component refresh go back to our page and refresh that's good so both counter component and fetch data component says not authorized so this is how we secure our individual components another thing we can use is the authorize view component which we can uh, the authorized view component is a templated component so we can use that to so it has two templates which first one is authorized right and second one is not authorized Right, so these are the two templates and if we copy all of these actually let's leave the title outside to make it more realistic because we're not going to hide our title uh, but we are going to hide everything else to be inside the authorized view and then and say you are not uh, authorized please contact admin then here we can remove this and come over here and refresh the data refresh the page going on here we can see you are not authorized please call it admin go to counter you see not authorized right and so this is the this is so removing that authorized that's important so don't use that authorized attribute because when you use this uh, it's not controlled by the authorized view uh, component right <laughs> it's con controlled by something else so this is using authorized view and the uh, authorized template as well as not authorized template uh, we have covered this so if we revert let's revert all of these okay and we use this so how do we provide a global authorized view that's under the app component so in here you can see that we have this authorized raw view which is also a uh, a template component right so here we can give a global uh, information about not authorized and here it says you are uh, or you don't have permission to access the page please contact admin right? so if we do this you can see that you don't have permission to access the page please contact me and if you go to fetch data you see the same thing so both of these are seeing this uh, same message so this is how you provide the not authorized message globally but if you want to provide an individual message you can use the authorized view like what I've just showed another thing the you typically want to do is to utilize the user state or the user information inside your logic so for example under the home page if we want to display some user information here right so we're going to go to our uh, index component which is the home page so we're going to delete this survey thing and then give some line break and in here if our logic requires user it requires us to provide some uh, uh, to to utilize the user information that comes from the authentication state so 
if we go to our app component, uh, the root component again, we can see this cascading authentication state. And this is similar to the this is similar to cascading value. We're actually cascading the authentication state down to the component tree. Right? So in order to use that cascading parameter, we need to declare a cascading parameter here. So first we have this code block, and then we're going to declare a cascading parameter. And that parameter is going to be because by default, cascading parameter are mapped to the uh, parent level, the root level by type, right? So here is authentication state. So this is the type auth state. We're going to keep this as a private parameter. It doesn't need anywhere else. So we can use this. And then uh, certainly we can use this as a uh, in user actions and for specific logic. But what I would do for the demonstration is I'm going to override the uninitialized uh, async. And then in here, I'm going to say this uh, state. We're going to actually await this uh, state. Right. Okay, let's change this to underscore all state. And then here we can say as state. And we are going to use this. And what we're going to do is we're going to say if our state is not, is not now. Then we're going to display some uh, some information about the user, right? So we can say the username is uh, state dot user dot identity dot name. Over here, we're going to loop through all of the claims. <coughs> through all of the planes and we're going to display claim type okay, and then we're going to display um, value Type and value. All right. So this is so this is how we are going to get the uh, authentication state, which is basically we're using the login user information. <clears throat> so let's test this. We'll refresh the page. We don't see anything because we didn't log in. So let's log in. Uh, my password Amy. and we don't see anything oh okay okay so that's because of this refresh all right so we have this username it's just basically the email address and then we have all of these claim type and claim <laughs> claim values not very useful in this case but could be useful in if we add some more meaningful claims at least this uh, this name and the value this is more uh, meaningful all right so that's how we use the authentication state inside our component next one is if we were to customize our identity uh, framework model. So let's first look at, look at our, our database. Okay, so this is the database we're connecting to our local, local DB, right? 
So let's um, go to Server Explorer. So this is going to be our database and testing connection. Everything is fine. Click on OK. C is the tables. So we have the SPDL users table, right? Uh, it has all this information. What if we need something else inside here? Let's say we're designing a, you know, a education system or a learning system, and we need a school information for each user, right? We need to be able to store in here. So then how do we customize the model? So in order to customize the model, uh, under here, we can create a A class that we call it SP net users users right and uh, currently if we look at our configurations and their startup which we have seen it's using the identity user right so what we will do is we're gonna inherit from the identity user Right. Here's our uh, identity namespace, and uh, so because we're inheriting from the identity user, so we will have all of the existing columns. Um, but what we need is a a new column that is called uh, school, right? Which has a string type. So for that, uh. We next we're gonna go to our application uh, DB context. In here, we need to provide our specific user type, right? The user uh, model that corresponds to that SBNet users database. Right? So we, we actually have this just created here, right? So just to be sure, F12 goes to the class that we just created. Right, and the next thing we need to do is inside the startup, uh, instead of use the default identity, we can just uh, we can change it to use identity and change this to uh, SP net users, right? And then uh, the second parameter identity row, and then we would add a migration. So in order to do that, we're going to go go to our tools, new git package manager console. I'm going to say add dash my migration. Uh, we we'll say uh, extended ASP net users. All right, so build succeeded, generated the migration to second version. Uh, in the up method, we can see it added school column. We go back to the console here, and we're going to say update, okay, update database. Build succeeded. Okay, it's done. Let's look at our server explorer and whether the whether we ever uh, refresh it. Do we see school? Yes, we see school, right? So we added this. So that's how we customize our model. So now let's talk about how we can customize our user interface. So if we look at the uh, project structure here, we can see in areas, the areas folder, which contains some pages and their account, we have a logout page, right? Then we have a login partial. What if we want to customize the register page? Right? Where do we do it? How do we do it? We go to right click on the project, click on add, and then in here there is a new scuff scuff folded item. Click on this, we choose identity, select identity here, click on add. Now it says scuff folding, right? It's trying to find inside that new get package. What are actually included inside that new get package? Here we can see all of the user interfaces that we can uh, customize. So we are going to customize the register uh, user interface and 
So this scuffle is going to connect from UI all the way to the database. That's why it needs to select a database contact, data context class, right? Which is this one that we have. And then we click on that. <clears throat> and then it says it's scaffolding. All right. So under the areas, we are going to see a register reader page here, right? So we have this reader page here. What if we want a uh what if we want to add the school information here right so we're going to go over here and if we look at our input model which is here email password right confirm password what if we um I need school information here so we're going to say school, and this is school, right? And on post, on post, we're going to say you know, school equals input.school. So this is the information that will be, uh, will be used later and uh, to persist the, the data into the database. So our, our logout page is still using identity user. Uh, in fact, we can just search in the whole solution to see where our identity user still are, and then we'll replace all of them. So inside here, we have identity user. So we're gonna have to use our identity user. Okay, to solve that problem, uh, we can come over here and uh, we can say add default UI to go to default behavior and then add default token providers as well. Right, that should fix the problem. And now let's run the application again. And if we register Okay, so we're missing the school field. Let's go to our register razor component. Let's copy this. Okay, so it's going to be here and then your school, copy and paste. And that should do it. Let's uh, build the solution again. <coughs> And come over here, refresh the page. We will see the so school field. And let's do our tester at gmail.com. Let's tester2. Okay. And password is going to be our password. And school is, let's just call it my school. And then click on register. Okay. So. And going over here and then all right so we have our uh, page and we're able to access all of these um, so now let's take a look at our uh, sbnet user table to see whether that email is there let's run a query new query I don't know why the screen is flashing like this. So let's select start as being uh, net users. And then let's run a query like this. And we have test her two and the school is my school. Right, okay. So we have successfully customized our user interface to include our uh, a new field which is the school field and we also successfully customize the ASP NAT users table uh, by going through the entity models and add migrations and update database okay that's everything I want to cover cover in this section um, hopefully this is helpful so if you like my videos please give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next section. Thank you.